Okay, so this worked way better than I thought it would. So this here is a Garmin Index sleep monitor. As the name implies, it is for monitoring sleep. I did a whole in-depth review on it up in the corner there where I talk about that scenario, but in short, in like 10 seconds or less, it is designed for people who do not want to wear a Garmin watch to sleep, but still get all of their sleep metrics consolidated into their Garmin watch account. But a ton of you asked what would happen if you just wore this 24-7. In other words, did not wear your Garmin watch at all, but wore this to backfill your Garmin account. Would that work at all? Would you be able to get steps and calories and sleep and heart rate data and everything else? So I set out to find out. After all, that would put it very similar to something like the Whoop Band, the Vice Hand Band up there, uh, that does all that stuff behind the scenes. But of course, this product is named Sleep Monitor, not All Day Monitor. So let's just simply get right into it. I start off at 11.45 p.m., so just before midnight, in particular two things. One, I charge this up to 100%, and two, I then shut off the Garmin watch that I had. Uh, now, in Garmin World, you have a primary wearable. That's the thing that calculates all of your advanced training metrics some watches that doesn't really matter that much so if you have an older watch it won't matter as much but if you have a newer fancier watch with things like training readiness and training status etc this watch whatever is defined as a primary wearable is the thing that calculates all that stuff for you so I wanted to turn this off entirely and I put it on the table for the entire duration of this test to see what would actually happen if it couldn't calculate those metrics now you may be wondering about this watch over here this is an Apple Watch Ultra 2 it is on an entirely separate phone an entirely separate Apple account it might as well be like my neighbor's account. It's not at all related to my main phone, so it's not contributing any data to it. Okay, so with the sleep band now on and my watch off and powered off entirely, uh, let's just simply go to sleep. Okay then, so waking up at around 7.30 in the morning before my alarm would go off, the index alarm that I'd set up, that'll be important in just a second. Within about 20 minutes, the Garmin Connect app had automatically calculated my sleep. I never took this band off at all. I just simply left it there, it calculated my sleep, and I was good to go. Except one little thing, I had set a vibration alarm for 7.55 a.m., and the way you get rid of that is you simply just double tap it uh, and it goes ahead and snoozes for 10 minutes. And then 8.05, it was then that same thing again. So I tapped it. And at that point, I'm like, you know what? I got to simply take it off for a quick second. So I literally just pulled it off about halfway down my arm. That will automatically turn off the alarm and then slid it back on again. And hey, a quick note, if you're fond of this video or these sort of rabbit holes interesting, definitely just simply watch this video all the way through. That is the only thing the YouTube gods care about. And we definitely want to keep the YouTube gods happy. Now, at this point, I went to drop off the kids at school. I uh, mean, notably, there was also a fun run. This was like the last day of school. And there was a fun run where they first did like the kids sections and then they did the adults as a competition now this is one loop around the football field uh, but not like a track but like an actual the 90 degree corners of the football field so properly miserable to sprint uh, saw lots of kids crash and burn but then it was adults turn and obviously I, I had to do this and I had to had to win and so sizing up the competition there there was a couple runners that were clearly there in the adults parents crowd uh, there was a bunch of people that were dressed like they came from a CrossFit workout and a bunch of people that were dressed like it was the Kardashians but it's all right I'm not judging here I'm just sizing up a competition uh, now I didn't want to like blast out of the starting gate and be that like person that just sprinted when everyone else was doing easy jog. So I went easy out of starting gate, but it was clear there were some runners that were going hardcore. Uh, but also there was like this one CrossFit dude that went way out super hard. He had a CrossFit shirt on, hence why I'm calling him CrossFit dude. I did not expect him to be able to sprint that hard to begin with, nor to be able to sustain it for this roughly 260 meter loop around the track or a corner as well as he did. So unfortunately I came second place. Next time I will know to to be on the lookout for crossfitters that can actually sprint and hold that sprint for 260 meters. Nonetheless, the reason why I mentioned this entire thing is this absolutely spiked my heart rate, which is something that's notable because this is measuring heart rate. It also had a bunch of steps in it, a bunch of intensity minutes in it, and everything else. But when it show up, after all, this is only like a 60 or so second uh, hard effort. Uh, but of course, my heart rate was elevated for a little while after that. Well, here's the data from that about an hour, two hours later, about two hours later after that, after I came home, did some other work, I shocked uh, the Edge MTV video. That's why that thing's sitting right there. Uh, and so you can see there is a little spike there uh, at the time of the race, but it's not quite hitting my peak heart rate. So we'll talk more about that a little bit later on as to how those peak heart rates are calculated in this 24 by 7 ish kind of mode. But here at midday is a good time to look at what metrics we're seeing already coming into the count. Again, this watch is totally off, just like it is right now, in fact, uh, and not contributing anything. So starting off, we see calories coming in. We see the active calories as well as passive calories. Some of those calories are from walking and stuff like that. So it's not just purely that little sprinter on the track. 
We see the pulse ox, that's our SpO2 data coming in. We see the respiration rate or breathing rate data coming in uh, on the hour for the highs and lows. Uh, we see, of course, the heart rate data coming in continually. Uh, there's the stress data, there's the body battery data. Uh, however, there is no intensity minutes data. Uh, so even though that was a super hard effort and my heart rate was elevated, there's zero intensity minutes being calculated. There's no steps being calculated, uh, no stairs being calculated, and then also notably no training readiness score being calculated. Now, not all Garmin wearables have training readiness score. Generally speaking, it's their mid upper to upper tier uh, devices that have that calculation. Uh, but that calculation does require your watch being powered on. As you can see right here, that is off. Now, most people wouldn't power off their watch. I did this because for funsies, and we'll get to what happens later on in the day when you do power this on if that score calculates correctly. Point being though, at this juncture in the day, really the only thing most people care about that's missing is steps, right? That's the thing that's not being done here, which is kind of funny because there's absolutely gonna be some sort of accelerometer and gyroness to be able to detect different portions of sleep phases and stuff. And that's clearly not being enabled on purpose is my guess. Uh, so no steps, but everything else is coming through just fine. So let's continue on with the day. The last day of school for the kids, I took them out to ice cream, took them to the beach. Uh, we were in the beach and the seawater and all that kind of fun stuff for like five plus hours, a long time. Uh, and no problems with the band underwater. I stole my daughter's goggles a few times and dove down uh, just for funsies. Uh, and it's notable that this thing is actually waterproof according to the manual to 50 meters, so water resistant to 50 meters. Uh, so no issues whatsoever here. And also in case you're wondering, it's not stinky at all. Even after a workout, we'll talk about in just a a second uh, I dumped in the pool of like chlorine I guess and so it smells perfectly fine something I can't always say for the woo band which seems to like retain stink more than any other cloth type oops uh cloth type device out there in any case speaking of that stink it was dinner time and then got the kids to bed and finally time for an indoor trainer ride uh so I did that for about 40 minutes including some pretty hard sprints mixed in there and then kind of the last half of that workout was a bit elevated in terms of heart rate again even though I'm on Zwift here I actually never saved the workout on Zwift so it never synced to my Garmin account there's no awareness in my Garmin account that this workout is actually happening however I did have the Apple Watch and Whoop on there so I could see my max heart rates because I was curious about how that would work and what this would detect as max heart rates versus uh this and it's really fascinating. So within the Garmin Index uh, wearable, you can see that spike in my heart rate uh, for that time I was on the trainer, but not quite as high. My max heart rate recorded on the Whoop was 176 beats per minute uh, versus the Garmin, it was much, much lower in the 140s to 150s. And the Garmin is bunching together basically in these two minute intervals. And just like on their wearables and just like almost every other uh, watch-based company out there, when you're not in a dedicated workout mode, it reduces the power of the optical heart rate sensor and you get less accurate uh, peak heart rate values during workouts. Because again, they're trying to save that battery across the entire day. That's different than what Whoop does, which is highly optimized for quickly scaling the heart rate sensor accuracy up when it detects you're doing a workout and then quickly reducing that again when you're not doing a workout. But in the case of the index monitor, because it's designed for sleep and is not optimized for 24 by seven aware, it's definitely reducing that down. So from Garmin's perspective, it probably just assumed I was doing a 40 minute horizontal shuffle at 10 p.m., which, you know, seems like a logical thing to do. Sadly, it was just a, a trainer ride. So at this point in the day, let's look at where we are. So now we're at basically 10.30 at night, uh, 1040 at night, and here is all of my data. And I just kind of run through this very, very quickly here before we have one more interesting test to do. Uh, so you can see the battery battery data continue throughout the day without any problems. It does seem like it's putting everything in the high stress event. This was a relatively low stress day, so I'm not really sure why everything seemed high stress, but whatever. Um, you can see pulse locks throughout the day, no problems. You can see respiration date throughout the day, no problems. Calories is now correctly updated to include that ride. It does seem a bit low because it's not calculating all my higher heart rate values that would drive a higher caloric burn. You can see body battery has basically flatlined at 5% uh, in the day. So I suspect those high stress assumptions are kind of driving some of that. You can see that my training status has remained the same because training status requires a workout. And in Garmin's world, I did not do a defined workout. My heart rate was elevated, but again, it was not an actual workout that was recorded as a workout. Likewise, my training readiness um, is not showing because it hasn't synced to this watch either. Uh, and then still steps, floors, intensity minutes are again, still flatlined in zero. Uh, and then also on the calendar, uh, your daily details doesn't show any automatically recognized activities, no walks, no runs, no bike rides, nothing else that would normally automatically happen on a Garmin wearable. Meanwhile, the battery throughout the day has very consistently been uh, at 1% an hour. Like 
astonishingly consistent at 1% per hour, pretty much the entire day spot on. So then we get to the most interesting part of the day. What happens when I power this back on? We're closing in on 11 o'clock at night. I'm gonna turn this on in real time and I'm gonna show you on the screen what's happening right now. As I power this on, I'll skip ahead like the boring parts of powering on and then syncing with my account. And as you can see, the exact moment that sync completes last night when I was recording this, uh, to the second, it goes ahead and updates trending readiness on my Garmin Connect app. Uh, and I'm instantly back in the good there, at least like in terms of seeing data. Uh, obviously it's upset about my trending readiness level in my day, but uh, you can see that it did update that accordingly. Now, again, as I mentioned earlier on, most people wouldn't power off the watch. If they didn't want to wear their watch, they might put it in your backpack or whatever the case is for the day or something else. It would be nearby, it would be syncing that data back and forth and life would be kind of normal there. Finally, for the last hour of the day, I turned this back off again, by the way, uh, and it's actually been off since then. Um, and uh, you can see the heart rate data pulled in just fine for the remainder of the day, uh, continuing to be 1% an hour uh, for the rest of the day. So before we get into kind of my summary thoughts here, let me just throw two sets of like uh, metrics up there. Uh, the first one, this is the overnight sleep data that you'll get throughout the day. This is the exact same thing I covered in my in-depth review, so I won't like rehash that. This here is the downstream metrics you would get from that, assuming you had a Garmin watch on, uh, like physically enabled somewhere on your account and powered on. Those are the metrics I would update if your watch supported those metrics. Here though is the interesting bit. Here is the daytime data you will get if you have just this on uh, and no Garmin watch on like on at all, just simply off and not syncing and not doing anything at all. These are the metrics that you'll see as your total daytime metrics. And then finally, these are the metrics that you will not see uh, in your Garmin account if you have this watch uh, powered off. These are the bits here that will not be contributed by the Garmin Index sleep monitor, not daytime monitor, uh, across the board. And note that last one right there. Uh, this does not transmit as an AMP Plus or Bluetooth smart heart rate monitor. Obviously, it's Garmin's Gen 5 optical heart rate sensor, uh, but they don't have the software in there, or whatever the case, enabled to go ahead and transmit like a normal, you know, heart rate monitor would something like this. It doesn't do that today. Is it technically possible? 100%. Uh, is it there today? Absolutely not. Uh, which then gets to where we stand as a Whoop-like competitor. Now, again, be very clear about this. This is not designed as a Whoop competitor. It's designed for people that don't want to wear a watch to bed, which is totally fine as a product category. Uh, obviously, though, at some point, Garmin will probably make a Whoop-like competitor. In this shows, they are way, way further along than I thought they were. Um, basically, this thing does everything except for like three core things. It doesn't show steps. Uh, it doesn't show your intensity minutes, which, you yeah, know, whatever. And then it does not show or update things like training readiness, etc. Now, of course, that's simply because you can't specify this as a primary wearable. If Garmin were to make a Whoop-like competitor, they would simply allow you to specify it as your primary wearable and things like training readiness and training status would automatically come through. And of course, the last piece they'd have to solve is the battery life. But again, this wasn't designed as a all-day tracker. I asked Garmin about battery life and why this thing only gets effectively four days if you had it on 24 by 7 mode. Keep in mind it's stated at seven days if you have it for sleep only, and my testing shows that is definitely true. Uh, but in 24 by 7 mode, it would be pretty much precisely 1% an hour and thus four days. Uh, anyways, they said it was because they have pulse ox or the SpO2 monitoring on the entire time, uh, which they say burns quite a bit more battery. In any case, it's not something I'm worried about because undoubtedly if Garmin were to make a purpose-built 24 by 7 wearable, they would have a lot of other things they do there from a battery standpoint, probably to reduce the battery uh, in regular daytime activities, increase it up during workouts and so on. Same things that you would see on Whoop in their 14 days. And I will give them credit on Whoop's 5.0 and MG straps, which this here, or MG sensors, MG sensors, uh, they're definitely getting a 14 day. That's been my case consistently across the board. Anyways, if you find these sort of rabbit holes interesting, or even this sort of like wearable 24 by seven tech interesting, uh, definitely hit subscribe because there's a lot more coming this week, which again, should be interesting. With that, have a good one.